It's all to do with the quality of life later on. It's not about, this is not going to, to determine how long we live, but um, our quality of life as long as we live, if we want to maintain um, our quality of life, be able to have uh, that uh, functional independence. Coming you? I'm behind. I accept that I may not be able to ever operate at the same level as I was before because I was like one of these people, you know. <laughs> and um, yes, I, so I, okay, I might have to modify that considerably, um, but still I want to do what I wanted to do. You know, you work through it, um, but it is still a very hard thing to deal with. can we increase awareness? That's a magic word, I think. They are aware of this frailty, what is going on in their head, what they are thinking, the pain in their body. How do uh, people accept ageing? I think it's a difficult one, really, because nobody really wants to. Embracing it in a positive way, an acceptance of ageing, is something for the individual, I think, because I think we all will embrace that differently. My friend was suggesting to me, well, why don't you ask for some assistance? You know, and, and I know that that's there for me to ask for. I'm not sure whether it's pride or whether it's I just don't want to accept that I can't do it and that I need the help. I know that when I get to that point where I, I can accept that, and I can remember my late mum, who just would not accept her own limitations. And I'm seeing, I guess, aspects of that. <laughs> not as long as my mum, mind you, but <laughs> aspects of that um, in myself. never seen myself as a victim of, of any any kind at all. And aging well means, I think, having a realistic assessment of your own capabilities, uh, and that's mental and physical and emotional, and coming to terms with the limits of your own capabilities. Don't be ashamed to walk around on the walk. The people I've spoken to in the street who, who are hobbled, I said, you know, life would be a lot easier if you got one of these. Oh, no, I couldn't. It, it's admitting. A walker, it's a lot easier to walk around on than a couple of walking sticks and, and make life easier. If we stop using the word ageing and use the word growing, your mind grows, your experience grows, your wisdom grows. So that's why I am quite proud to say how old I am. <laughs> Frailty or wear and tear, you just take them as part of your growing. Make sure you look after your body whilst you are looking after your mind. While we are aging, we are losing muscles. And that means we're getting weaker and weaker. And because we are getting weaker, we, lost, we are losing confidence. You know, ideally, I would like to be able to walk and walk every day. But I have to be honest to say that I'm fearful of doing that, particularly on my own. Um, because I'm so unsteady and um, and of course you know part of the the problem is as you know particularly as people become frail is that uh, they do get very weak. So it depends on where you're at where you traveling to and from whether it's in a supermarket and even then it's not easy it's really quite frightening being in a wheelchair. My daughter and I went shopping and uh, these people they're looking at me and I'm going well I can't reach that you know, and 
She went off to get the milk and one kind, kind lady said, can I help you? And I said, that's really sweet, you know. And then I had another person looking at me going, yeah, why is that person out here shopping if they can't do it? It's just overwhelming at times, you know. My body's telling me it's you know, falling a bit, pain, pains in the ankles, pains in the knees. The back pain's continuous. I'm on the waiting list for a neurosurgeon. It's been 18 months or more also. My doctor's written two or three letters to the neurosurgeon and nothing's. The health system's pretty crazy these days. Panadine for cholesterol and blood pressure. My family, my two boys and the wife, yeah, they keep me on even ground. As far as physical things go, I've, I've worked very hard, vol voluntary work for 35 years for Forgotten Australians, and I realised that it was helping myself also. Um, but then I have self-care where I love to sing, I love to dance, and I'm now um, learning tribal drumming and the ukulele. So, um, and I love going to karaoke and I love humour. So I think all these positive things um, just make such a difference to your health too. It's also, it's doing things, not, not letting whatever's happening to you stop you doing things. Uh, try different things if you can't do what you used to do. I'm still hopeful to, to get back to doing some ballroom dancing. I try a little bit with my knees being the way they are with the osteoarthritis, but I, I find it challenging to move in uh, different directions. But I'm sure there's something out there that I will be able to do because I just like that aspect of choreographed dancing and things like that. You know, socialising, having hobbies, whether it be gardening. I'm also a, um, a printmaker. I belong to a, an art group over in uh, Union Street in Stepney. We've had some exhibitions and I've got some of the artwork on display here in the hall and we do it as a collective. And through that group, it's terrific because you get to meet people and you, you know, you, and it's that, you know, it's that talking and, you know, showing and caring and, you know, I think it's, it's important that we all have situations where we have interests, you know, and uh, yeah, I use that as a bit of therapy, the old art, because it is, you know, we laugh and, and we laugh about it and we will say, oh yeah, we come along here because it's, you know, it's very therapeutic and it is, you know. I think you have to keep your mind fit and I do like art. And I think it's a wonderful way um, to express yourself. I also think it's a wonderful thing for hands and mind coordination. Oh look, I think arts, you know, it has a huge, wonderful impact on people when they want to do it through the pottery to whatever. It's very healing. You know, when when the music comes on and dancing well, you might be surprised that <laughs> I'm not so I'm not so limited because I I love it so much and it's good exercise too. But I think that you know, being involved in groups, you know, whatever it be, you know, like with my art group and that sort of thing, it helps. These things help. In a lot of cases, um, the elderly might perhaps gradually be eating less with over time without realising it. And I'm happy to cook and feed everybody else, but I do forget to eat myself. And then that, it seems like it's, it's not really, your diet is highly important. That affects your mental, affects your physical, it, it just affects everything. Um, I think there is also some misconception uh, amongst a lot of people people that um, we don't actually need as much meat as we get older but in fact um, our requirements for proteins does increase by you know at least 0.2 um, um, grams per kilo body weight so that can add up to a fair bit a day so maybe at least 30 grams or so uh, their requirements might have jumped up there and there is this gap that they, they are not able to meet 
if they don't increase their, their, their intake. They are perhaps more isolated because the partner has passed away and they're now living on their own, having to cook for you know, themselves and uh, that's not, um, I guess, made for enjoyable eating. You know, it's fine if you've got family around you where you can have support and you've got people that can advocate for you, but if you're a, an elderly person that doesn't have family or doesn't have, um, you know, networking, then it's very, very hard. And I see a lot of people, and I have seen a lot of people that have fallen through the cracks, and um, they don't get looked after properly. And that's a horrible, horrible existence, especially towards the end of your life. So, yeah. The social relationships that you've got and the level of those are really important. It's a different story if you go on your own in a nursing home and a different story if you have as many times as possible your kids or your grandkids next to you. It makes a difference. Uh, frailty is multifactorial, the causes of it, um, besides illness and other things. The, I guess the main environmental factors are nutrition and um, activity. And I think that um, being active and, um, you know, being physically, you know, able to do things is very, very important. And given that uh, as we get older, we lose that ability. And um, that in itself is very, very, you know, harmful to people because uh, as a result of that, not only do they lose their physical um, capabilities, but they also become depressed and um, on and on it goes. If you belong to a group and you've got a good network of, you know, people, it's like when you see elderly people walking around in groups, you know, they're motivated because of that group activity. For me, it's about being able to um, be fit so that, or healthy enough so that you can do the things which lead you to being healthy and maintain um, a healthy lifestyle, an active lifestyle, um, to participate in the world in whichever way you want to. They're supposed to go a lot higher, but that's as much as I can do at the moment. To age healthily, it's living your life without having to worry about things that will happen to you, that whatever you get gets thrown at you, you can deal with it. Now my, my advice to anybody that's starting to feel like they're getting frail would be to try and be active if they can and don't dwell on the negative side of the pain issues. You need to accept that and then once you've accepted, go and do and find out what you can do, find out information, be informed and find out what you can do to help yourself because I believe it is not only physical but you have to be have the right state of mind to um, make the most of, of what you can and to accept it and get on um, because it's, too, it's just too short. Life is too short.